I'm Tres Pride. Welcome back to another Sims 4 new news video on my channel. There's been some more details posted about the new Sims 4 Life and Death Pack coming out on Halloween. I already did a trailer reaction where I went over the blog post the Sims team had posted and I had a lot of good information in it. But these pictures of information we are about to go over has even more details about the gameplay features. And yes, I know I said these were posted three days ago. These actually came out the night after I posted my first video. And I was going to record this two days ago, the day after the information was posted. But then I got sick and I haven't been in a clear enough headspace to process a bunch of information at once. But I'm feeling slightly better mentally, so I decided to go ahead and make this video, even if it's slightly late. But I still sound like shit, so I do apologize for that. It's also like 5 a.m. when I'm recording this, because I can't go back to sleep. So I'm trying to be kind of quiet, which probably doesn't help me sounding rough. But yes, yeah, so oh, sorry if my voice doesn't sound great. But anyways... <laughs> This information we are about to be reading is coming from Lunar underscore Brittany on Twitter, and it says the EA app seems to have even more information about the pack, so that's where they're getting this information. They have three separate posts uh, with 10 different pictures of information, so let's go ahead and go over those. So with these screenshots, there seems to be like categories. So the categories for the first three photos are in life, afterlife, and rebirth. So it's for in life, it says choose your life goals. Young adult Sims and older will have a bucket list that will fill up with goals. Some items you may choose and some will appear for you to accept or reject. Possible bucket li list items include declaring a crafted masterpiece, your life's work, woohooing in an unconventional location while in a relationship at its max, spending 24 hours in game in a Pacific world, and more. Completing bucket list items will also unlock interactions, the burning soul trait, and the ability to be reborn, and more. So we knew most of that information, but it just was giving us some examples of like exactly what a bucket list item could be and also what it, it unlocks. So, oh, this burning soul trait sounds really cool too. I want more information on that specifically. But then the next photo oh, uh, is the afterlife. It says, complete your unfinished business. If Sims die with an incomplete item on their bucket list, it becomes and becomes a ghost, those items will become their unfinished business. Completing the items will, will then unlock the options to either move on or be reborn, though you may also choose to have them remain a ghost. So my, my, what I'm wondering is like how exactly it's going to work you choosing to stay a ghost after you die because currently your sim just dies and they go into an urn and then you have to kind of like wait around like keep the grave on your lot and then just kind of wait for them to pop up randomly one night so like are we gonna get the option now to to just automatically add them to our household as a ghost when they die I, i'm very confused about uh, how that part's gonna work but either way uh they will be able to still work on their bucket list after they die. It just becomes their, quote, unfinished business. But they have to do that to be reborn or move on, which I think is kind of cool. I, I think that's a, a cool feature. All right, but the next one is says rebirth. Start over. Completing their bucket list or unfinished business will give us them the ability to be reborn. They will be submerged in Ravenwood's Eiffel Bog before you are taken into cast. The reborn Sim's age and appearance will both be customizable. You can also choose which household your reborn Sim will join and what their relationship will be. For example, you could insert the reborn Sim into the Goth family with Bella and Mormor as their parents. That's actually really cool. No, that's really cool, because I guess I didn't think about the fact if your sim is reborn, they don't have to be reborn into the same family. That's just kind of like what I automatically thought, 
but you could literally just put them anywhere and you could customize them so they can even look a little bit different when they're reborn. They don't have to look the same. I think that's really cool. I think that's really cool. All right, but that is all the information in that post. And then the next post, it looks like our categories are grief, remember, and inheritance. So for grief, every sim grieves differently. Unhappy events like death and breakups will have long-term emotional effects on a sim. The four types of grief are anger, blues, holding it together, and denial. And which one of the sims experience will depend on their traits as well as what happened and who they lost. Grieving sims will have interactions in uh, various ways to cope, including talking to other sims and counseling. So... As I said in my other video, I really appreciate that they're including grief in this, specifically the grief stages. From someone who grew up in grief counseling, I, I appreciate those little details, especially with it being anger, sadness, uh, acceptance, and denial, pretty much. And it's kind of cool that, like, because most people in real life, they go through different stages of grief, like the five stages of grief. And they kind of, like, took four out of those five stages and just made them their own thing, which kind of represents the stages of grief, but it's not your sim having to go through a shit ton of emotions. So I kind of like the way they incorporated that there. I think that was really clever. I also like the fact that they're including counseling now. Um, for someone that grew up, like I said, in grief counseling, I think that's really cool that they are including that. I wonder if that will also be available for kids. Like, can you send your kids to counseling? Like, it, if that's true, I could just do a whole re-life or replay of my life. But, um, I won't do that to y'all. <laughs> Alright, the next category, though, is the remember category. It says, remember in your own way. When Sims lose a loved one, hold a custom event with the rituals you want. Gather in a location of your choosing and express grief in a variety of ways to form Toast to eulogies to a memorial cannon that shoots confetti. Rituals can be somber, but upbeat celebrations of life are possible too. Besides hosting an event, you can commemorate deceased them with customizable grave sites and caskets, choose the look of the headstone and urns, and add decorations a sim would have enjoyed to their casket. That's really cool. Okay, this whole pack. I'm really looking forward to this pack, you guys. Okay, so basically this is talking about funerals, if you didn't pick up on that. And there's just, they're trying to make it, I'm assuming the funerals are going to be pretty much like wedding stories or uh, the new date system from Love Struck. I, I think that that's what I'm assuming the event is going to be like, which means you could probably earn rewards from it too, which would be kind of messed up. But I wonder, I wonder if that means there's going to be like a gold bar uh, or like where it does like the copper, silver, and gold. That would be kind of weird to have for a funeral, but that's how everything else works. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it could also be like holidays. That doesn't include a gold all thing that that just is the the customs so that could be a possibility too i'm not exactly sure but i like the fact that you don't have to have a funeral you can just put them in a grave site also you sh what they're saying that there's gonna be cemeteries and i think it's really cool you can customize your not only the cemetery like you can build your own cemetery lot but then you can also go to the fact to customize is the casket, the headstones, and urns, and you can even decorate the casket, which I think is really cool you can decorate the casket, because I remember when my dad died, like, one, one of the main memories I have from his funeral is me putting a rose on his casket, and I just, I don't know, I, because of that experience, I, I think it's really cool that you can decorate your sims cassettes. But next, we have the inherit category. It says, write wills and pass down heirlooms. Sims aged child and up can designate certain items as heirlooms, which can be passed down through generations. Possible heirlooms include 
both craftable items and items available in build mode, like quilts and music boxes. Hovering over an heirloom will always show the sim it belonged to. Sims can create wills which will dedicate which other sims will obtain their heirlooms, money, children, and more. Choose the emotional impact you want the will reading to have. Okay, so I'm assuming... I'm assuming you don't have to choose just Sims in your household. I'm assuming you can choose any Sim you know. I think it's cool you can pass out now not only objects, but money as well. Like, they did say when the original post that if all your Sims die in the household, you your money automatically goes where you choose it to go. It doesn't, like... I just disappear. So, oh, that is also a really cool. They didn't include that information in this paragraph, but it kind of has to do with that, that as well. So, oh, oh, I'm wondering if, like, all your, all the Sims die, in, what happens when all your Sims die in a household that you used to play in? Like, like in a Legacy Challenge, I still have, like, my red air sims in one household, but I'm currently playing with the orange air sims in the other household. So, when the red air sims die, hey, do I still get to choose where their money goes, or do I have to be in-game with that family when all of them die for that to happen? I, I know, I'm totally getting off topic here. <laughs> I also think, though, this first sentence, it says, Sims, age, child, and up can designate certain items as heirlooms. So, even as a kid, your kid can think about their will. I and mean, you can't write a will until you're a young adult or older, but you can still designate certain items, which I, I think that's cool oh, that kids can do that. It gives a little bit more customization in your story. Um, and the fact that it can be any item from build mode is actually pretty cool. All right. But that is it for that post finally we have the last one it actually has four categories in it it's manifest haunt crypts and the cemetery and landmarks so let's go ahead and go into manifest first it says grow your power power or progression for ghosts has five tiers split between good and evil lanes as well as four tier neutral track in the middle as you work to become the best or worst goal you can be, you'll unlock powerful abilities. Make sure to watch your Sigma gauge. You'll get more see-through and you are low on energy. The ultimate ability of a good track is benevolent blessing. And the ultimate ability of evil track is otherworldly curse. That sounds so cool. That sounds so cool. Okay, so I didn't, I didn't realize that the ghosts were going to be getting, like, this whole tier power level, like, vampires and witches have. I think that's really freaking awesome, actually. They're just doing a whole overhaul on ghosts. So, I guess, like, you have ghosts in the base game still, but if you get this pack, like, they get this whole, like, power list thing i okay that's actually really cool i didn't realize that, that they were doing that and you could either be a good ghost or a bad ghost so that's kind of cool that's kind of cool all right and the next one is haunt how will you, you haunt your sims can be very friendly ghosts and help out around the house you're haunting clean messes and fix broken items this will earn goodwill oh, essence you can also embrace the fiendish fun of scaring living sims and earn fear essence. Both types of essences can be sold for simoleons. Oh my goodness. I wonder how much money you can make off that. Like, I kind of want to uh, do a video where I just see how much money I can make off of essences. That, would, that sounds like a really fun way to make money. Especially if we're doing the fear essences. That sounds really fun. Okay, I like the fact they include that. All right, the next one is Crepes and Cemeteries. So I want to read this because I'm very interested in the cemeteries. Visit the dead. Crypts can hold the urns up to 20 sims, but they are more -er than just a final resting place. The living can visit to mourn, nap, woohoo, or join the mortician career. Early adventures are also waiting. 
make careful choices and you could find the treasure or something less pleasant. Cemeteries are a common site for your grieving rituals. Ghosts often spend time there, and if you encounter the gravekeeper at night, he might share a frightful tale. Cemeteries can be created and placed in any world. Thank God. Okay, so I was really worried, like, it was going to be, like, high school years, where the high school can only be on one lot, but no. Cemeteries are a new lot type. You can put them in any world. I'm assuming you can even make, like, strictly family graveyards, so you don't have to have, like every sim in the world be buried there so with the the ability to build old uh graveyards and customize urns and headstones and then the fact that you can put up to 20 sims in one crypt so like you could have like different family crypts i that's just that's really cool that's really cool also i love the fact there's a mortician career I think that's hilarious. I love that. And you can woohoo in the crypts. Like, I gotta see that. I gotta see that. Oh my goodness. I'm also very curious about uh, this little adventure thing going on. I'm assuming it's kind of like going to something like Glades or something like that where you have to cl- uh, select the correct options to get through the story and then you like find something in the end. Or go to a new world or whatever. It's saying that you could find treasure. I don't know if that means there's a new place to go. Or you just. I'm assuming you kind of just get items in your inventory. But still that's a cool little feature. I'm really enjoying this pack. Or like the information for this pack. Okay but we have one more picture. It is landmarks. People places and poltergeists. I'm sorry. This is going to be weird for me because, like, one of my dogs is named Poltergeist. So, <laughs> no trip to Ravenwood would be complete without a trip to Bayful Bog, a large river with supernatural powers. Sims can go here for an out-of-body experience. Ghost Sims or Sims who are close to death can visit the Bayful Bog to be reborn if they have completed their bucket list slash unfinished business. If you also visit Alice's dead tree to get a quest from the ghost mother, adventures in the haunted house, meet Grimm and the golden ruins, and encounter frightening others in the village and more. So, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of, like, sims to interact with, including ghosts and whatnot. Um, and then it's talking again about that, that river where you can go in and be reborn or turn into a, a sim or whatever, which I think is really cool. I definitely want to experiment with that, but it looks like there's even another place for you to do a quest. So there's, there's the cemetery quest, and then there's also a dead tree you can go to, and you can, and also you can do an adventure in a haunted house. So I'm assuming the haunted house is going to be like a rabbit hole. It's not going to be like the haunted house lot we get, uh, lot trait we get, or I guess lot challenge? It used to be a lot trait, but then they add challenges and I think include a challenge. That come in the paranormal stuff. A lot of people were like questioning how they're adding haunted houses when we already have the haunted house thing. And, uh, I think what they're meaning is it's literally going to be like a rabbit hole. Your sim goes in and you just get like notifications. I think that's what they're saying. I also like the fact that, um, they are making a world where specifically ghosts walk around and Grimm shows up. Cause I feel like you need more ways to be able to run into Grimm. Like that's just, just my opinion. But guys, that is all the information we have here. Like I said, this uh, information came from Lunar underscore Brittany and they got it off the EA app. So I'm really excited for this pack. If you couldn't tell, I literally had all positive things to say. I just, this, this pack is going to be right up my alley. So <laughs> be expecting a lot of videos on it. But anyway, guys, that's it for now. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and do all the awesome stuff because you guys are awesome people. I'll see you next time. All right. Bye.